Welcome back to Inside Golf. We continue our look at the Concession Club in Bradenton, Florida. What a beautiful facility. Unbelievable. Golf course designed by Jack Nicholas and Tony Jacklin. The history, the name, the Ryder Cup concession, the beautiful facilities. I'll tell you what. Can't wait to get down to Early Bradenton. Early Christmas present. Oh, are you listening? Linda? I'm ready. Are you listening? <laughs> yeah, and you know, from time to time, the concession club invites different golfers to come down and compete Ryder Cup style. So, we'll see how our local guys did. Jimmy Wright's here to tell us about it. This weekend, we're quite proud and honored that we are having what we call the Concession Cup Philadelphia. And what that is, is that we have five clubs from the Philadelphia area that have come down this weekend for some friendly competition with a team from the concession, which makes six teams of four players each. And we're playing this match over Friday and Saturday. And then after the Saturday match is over, we'll crown the champion for 2010 for the Concession Cup Philadelphia. My team, the Bluebell Country Club, composed of Mike Trachenberg, Jules Quinones, and Bill Mikuluk, came down here not knowing what we were going to uh, get to see, but we have been just overwhelmed with the extraordinary uh, help assistance by the entire staff. The golf course is immaculate. It's one of the best golf courses that we've ever played on. We're in the process of hosting uh, major clubs from all over the country and, and from overseas. We are doing this because of the Ryder Cup affiliation that we have with the golf course. We've also done this with some other clubs. We've had a Ryder Cup style format with Lindrick out of England. Stoke Park, right outside of London. Uh, last year we hosted Medina uh, for a Ryder Cup event, a uh, competition between their members and ours. And uh, now we've just had the Philadelphia group in, uh, five teams uh, of four men teams. So uh, uh, it, it seems to be a great venue for it. it. Seems to be a great way to introduce the club to the, to the entire world and uh, in a competitive nature. And, uh, the hospitality our, our wait staff and my staff give here uh, is just uh, as good as we can make it. Jimmy brought up an interesting point this morning at breakfast which I think I'll always remember now in golf playing is that the think of offense and defense the players are on offense the golf course is on a defense and it's always going to be there. Competition was very friendly uh, we had a good time very competitive um, and uh, playing here against the you know some tough, tough competition here at uh, Concession. And uh, I think we know now, hopefully we'll be invited back next year and uh, we'll come back a little stronger. And uh, we, we uh, the, the flight and, of course, we know a lot of the guys from Pennsylvania. We play with them, know their game a little bit, know what uh, we had to do. But it was, it was really, really a good time. Well, I enjoy playing at uh, special events like this. You get a chance to meet other members from other clubs. Um, unique experience unique personalities, but we find out we have one thing in common, we enjoy the game of golf. Well, concession team, congratulations. Don is captain of the team, I want to congratulate you on a marvelous victory over our teams from uh, Pennsylvania. Well, thank you very much, Gary. All right. We had a great time. Uh, the competition was wonderful. Uh, it was a great bunch of fellows we played with, and uh, we sure do appreciate them coming down, and we'd like to have them back again. People from up north who are uh, down here and enjoying our beautiful weather and our beautiful golf course and that's what kind of really made it a lot of fun. And then we find out how many people we know in common, which is unusual. Um, we've gone to some schools together like Notre Dame, places like that, and so all of a sudden you have a kind of an intercollegiate co uh, connection and it's a lot of fun. The Concession Golf Club in sunny Sarasota, Florida is offering all Penn State fans attending the Outback Bowl an exclusive stay-and-play golf package. Voted Best New Private by Golf Digest, the Concession Golf Club's inviting you to get out of the cold and go and play this award-winning Jack Nicklaus signature golf course. The Concession Golf Club's Outback Bowl stay-and-play golf package. For more information, call Jimmy Wright. 941-322-1922 or visit theconcession.com. Guests of Inside Golf enjoy dining at Sin Sin, the popular Asian fusion restaurant located on Germantown Avenue in the heart of scenic Chestnut Hill. 
And now it's time for Teed Off, brought to you by Yingling, America's oldest brewery. Welcome back. Inside Golf continues with Teed Off. Today, we are at Cigars International Superstore, right outside of Bethlehem, right off 22 East. And it's located actually on Nazareth Pike. It is a huge store. And if you like golf and cigars, this was meant for you. Our panel today, Tony Leodora, no stranger to Teed Off from Talk, uh, Golf Talk Live and also Golf Styles Magazine. Bob Holder on radio up here in the Lehigh Valley every day with After Further Review on Sports Radio AM 1470. And our good friend from MyPhillyGolf.com, that would be Joe Logan. Tony, the year 2010. It's that time of the year when we start thinking about player of the year. But when you look back at some of the memorable golfers from the past, guys like Phil Mickelson, who a guy like you says maybe has turned into a pathetic old man at a ripe young age. Arthritic, not arthritic, 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 arthritic old 40, man. Arthritic. He's 40, and we know that's not old. Or Tiger, we know what happened to Tiger. Got caught with his <clears throat> down. And, and, and Patrick Harrington, who was going to be the next big superstar in Europe. He'd won a couple majors, and lately it's like, what, ha what, happened? what happened to Padraig? Lost so, the swing completely. So what happens? Did they just put that player of the year title on hold for next year? And how about Ernie Els? We thought maybe this was going to be his year. He started out 1-2 and then completely went away, which has been sort of his case in the past. He gets a taste of the victory, and that's pretty much it. I don't know whether Ernie has the drive that, say, Tiger had. But, yeah, yeah it, was, it was strange. Yeah, it was the changing of the guard is what we had this year. We had all the young guys winning. We had uh, new faces winning, first-time winners. And uh, when you come to the end of the year, I know that our friend Jim Furyk will probably win the player of the year, but it's not a resounding it? win. You does, know, he, does he deserve like a, the player of the like year? by default, by right, default. Bob? Yeah. I wouldn't say it's by default. He played the best out of the group you have to choose from. It's not like it used to be. There's so many young guns that are coming up that can play this game. And you're going to hear more and more from the Ricky Fowlers and the, you know, the Dustin Johnsons and those guys that, are, that you haven't heard from before. You've played the game. All, all of us have played. We all get it going every once in a while. And it just so happens that Furyk got it going at the right time when Phil had some problems. Of course, Tiger was on the shelf, and they all knew this could be my year. Well, but, and how about internationally? Right. You got Lee Westwood, who is now challenging to be the number one player in the world. Westwood has sort of rejuvenated. When all these other guys, we just, I mean, Lee Westwood, you know, that wasn't his first time around the block. No. He went through a stage where he was an up and comer and he was a down and outer. Now right. he's back up to being the top player in the number world. Number one in the world. Still, I'm with Tony. I think it'll be Furyk for a couple of reasons. He's done everything he was supposed to do. He won three times this year, he won the FedEx Cup. Uh, and most importantly, he's a nice guy. The other players vote on this. And he has been very good for a long time, but he's been overshadowed by Tiger, Phil, and briefly VJ. Has he this ever is won his the moment. player of the year? Has no, he ever won, won that? This is so you're time. saying it's a, I feel sorry we should vote for this guy because he's a nice guy? Well, you're going to give him the player of the year because he's a nice guy? No, because he, he look the, at his stats for this year. He but, won the FedEx Cup. What, yeah, if, yeah. what if he had, what if Matt Kuchar, who was leading, right, going into the mm -hmm. last weekend, right. what if Matt Kuchar, had won the FedEx Cup. He had a couple wins. Would he have been uh, considered the player of the year? It would have been a much tighter race. Yeah. Okay. Much tighter race. Another thing about Furyk that I like, you realize the guy's 179th, I mean, he, on, the, on the distance hitting tee shots. He's showing that you don't have to be a long hitter to own the game these days. He, you know, he hits See, it 276. Hope, there's hope for you, Tony. <laughs> right. Huh? The cigar, the short game, That's it. maybe you can resurface. Yeah, he... He probably is the prime example of a guy who has the entire game without the distance part of it. Right. You know, he's a great ball striker with his irons. Uh, his short game is terrific. His bunker play, unbelievable. And he's a very, very good putter, so. And they, what happened when he was late for the tee time for the, uh, for the pro-am? Yeah. What did they, he couldn't yeah. play that week. Well, if he's player of the year, they're going to let that slide, right? They'll say, okay, Jim, just try oh, to be on time. Next time huh? when you're supposed to, these sponsors are right. paying a lot of money. That's about what it is. Well, yeah. it, it, This is going to be the type of year that I think is going to stick out. When you look at the record book and all the player of the year things, you're going to see that one that jumps out of you, sort of like the money title does. When you go back 15, 16 years, and then all of a sudden you come to 1994 and Corey Pavin 
won it with not even a million dollars, nine hundred and seventy-nine thousand dollars. He was the last guy Barely under a million. Barely keep your card now with right, a million bucks. Right, exactly. I, when you go down the money leaders, you go, oh, these guys, Corey Pavin. <laughs> well, I think that's going to be the same thing that happens this year, Jim Furyk. No, no offense, Jim. We love you, but it was uh, not maybe the best year for some of the big names in in the game of golf. Hey, it happens. And we'll be back. Inside Golf continues in just a moment. Tee Off has been taped on location at Cigars International Superstore in Bethlehem, PA, the largest retailer of premium cigars in the nation. Check out their website for specials and to place your next order at cigarsinternational.com. To the Duffers, the Hacks, we've been there. To the three and four putters, we learned. And to the Rough Riders and Sandman, we're ready to teach you. To everybody out there who thinks they can't play the game, the over 28,000 PGA golf professionals say, we're here to help you discover or rediscover the joys of golf. To you, and you, and you, we're here. The Philadelphia Section PGA is here to teach you. Play golf, Delaware Valley. Inside Golf wants to bring you more. That's why we've launched a brand new website so you can keep up with our show now more than ever. See for yourself by clicking through our calendar of events, featured courses, photo gallery, and of course, our favorite featured products. It's all at InsideGolf.net. Colleen Wolf's wardrobe is provided by Adidas, the leader in men's and women's apparel for the athletic golfer. Well, our thanks to Jimmy Wright. And all the folks down at the concession club, you know, they say once you're at the concession club or get a chance to sample the concession club, you're going to want to come back time after time. And the easiest way to sample it, since you can't go to Bradenton today, maybe, is to go on our website, InsideGolf.net. You can link up to the concession club and you're going to be hooked on it. It is the last week before Christmas, right? That's right. Are you done your shopping? No, I haven't started yet. Well, oh, well, <laughs> you're in trouble. Listen, the folks at uh, TaylorMade and Bushnell, mm -hmm. they have some advice, okay? Uh-huh. You need a sleeve of golf balls, maybe perfect stocking stuffer. That's now, right. these, this would be a big stocking. I don't stocking. think they're going to fit. I don't think they'll, but if you're going to take out a sleeve of balls, you're going to have to have something to hit them with. These are the new burner irons from yes. uh, TaylorMade. Yep. So there you go. You still have plenty of time. Like Colleen hasn't started yet. That's You're right. way ahead of the game. And you know, I mean, I'm thinking about my gift. And if I can't get a gift to go down to the concession club, then I think I would like one of these Bushnell range finders. Absolutely. What do you think about that? No golfer should be without one. You no. can find the closest tree ornament. That's yeah? right. It's uh, two and a half feet from here. I can even make that putt. <laughs> hey, thanks again to Jimmy Wright and the people at the concession club. Been a great year, hasn't That's it? That's right. Merry Christmas. What a way Happy to, holidays. What a way to finish up the year here on Inside Golf. Colin and I want to wish you and yours a very happy holiday season and a great 2011. So, remember, no matter how bad it's going for you, even if you haven't started your Christmas shopping yet, don't pick up. Can't believe that. <laughs> for Colleen Wolf, I'm Harry Donahue. See you next time on Inside Golf. Inside Golf has been brought to you in part by Yingling, America's oldest brewery, and by the Philadelphia Section PGA.